this lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be mostly about finding roots of polynomials um, modulo some prime number p. So the previous lecture, we discussed polynomials of degree 2 and showed there was a reasonably fast algorithm to do this. Um, in general, if you want to solve fx as congruent to 0 mod p, for f an arbitrary function, this can be rather hard if p is large. For example, if you want to solve the discrete logarithm problem, a to the power of x is congruent to b modulo p, there doesn't seem to be any particularly easy way of doing this. However, it's easy for special functions p. It's easy if f is a polynomial. Um, and there are several ways of doing this. There's one found by Berlekamp and another found by Cantor and Sassenhaus. And I'm going to be describing the main idea of the cantor zassenhaus um, algorithm for finding roots. Um, in fact, this is a special case of um, factorizing f into irreducible factors. So finding the roots is just the same as finding the linear factors. And I'll say a little bit more about this later. Um, in order to do this, um, we're going to need several other algorithms that we've discussed earlier. So I'll, I'll just briefly recall these. First of all, we, we, we've got the Euclidean algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor of two numbers a and b, which is very fast. And what we're going to use is the fact this works for polynomials. If we've got two polynomials f and g, then we can find the greatest common divisor of the polynomials f and g, except these polynomials might have coefficients in the integers modulo, modulo a prime number. Well, that's OK. It doesn't really make very much difference. Um, well, this is fast if the degree of f and g is small, whatever small means. Um, if the degree of f is large, you know, say, 10 to the 30 or something like that, then, there's the, the, then the obvious division by remainder of f by g, which you need in Euclid's algorithm, starts getting very, very, very slow because the, the number of steps it takes is going to be approximately equal to the degree of f. So um, we also want to be able to speed up um, division with remainder. And for this, we, we recall the Russian peasant method of exponentiation. So you remember, if we want to compute a to the n, we don't use n mi minus 1 multiplications. We write n uh, in, in binary. In other words, n is equal to 2 to the um, a0 plus 2 to the a1 plus 2 to the a2 for various integers a1 and a2 and so on. And then we work out a to the 1, we square it to find a squared, we square it again to find a to the 4, and then we find a to the 8, and we work out, say, a to the 13, as that would be a to the 8 times a to the 4 times a to the 1, where we write 13 in binary as 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 2 to the 0. So we recall we can do exponentiation fast, and we also recall that um, we should reduce modulo something or other at each step. So if we're working modulo a prime, we should reduce modulo the prime at each step. And if we're trying to divide by a polynomial, we should reduce modulo the polynomial at each step. And now we can do a fast division of polynomials. So we want to divide polynomials f by g. And, and what we should do is you think of g as having small degree. f might have very large degree. However, most coefficients are 0. And what, <coughs> what we want is a way of speeding up the division of f by g. Well, <coughs> if f is, say, equal to x to the n, <coughs> plus lower terms with n very large, what we do instead of dividing f by d, g directly, we work out x to the n 
modulo the polynomial g. So um, I'm not taking it modulo um, a number, I'm taking actually taking it modulo a polynomial, which just means you throw away all multiples of this polynomial. And we can work on x to the n mod g using um, the Russian peasant method. And uh, the, 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 this is a very fast method of working out exponentials. And if f has only a few non-zero coefficients, we can do that with, with each monomial that occurs in f. And so we get a fast way of dividing polynomials with remainder, even if one of the polynomials has really large degree. OK, having reviewed these fast algorithms, let's go back to find the roots of f, where f is some polynomial of smallish degree. And we recall that x to the p minus x was equal to x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 all the way up to x minus p minus 1. OK, that's by Fermat's theorem, because each of these numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on is a root of this polynomial. That's just what Fermat's theorem says. So this must be divisible by all these, and then you can see they're the same because their degrees are equal. So the greatest common divisor, x to the p minus x with f, is equal to x minus r1 times x minus r2 and so on, where r1, r2 and so on are, are, are distinct roots of f. So if f has multiple roots, we only get the multiple roots one each time because um, you can see that, that, that these will be exactly the factors dividing both this expression here and, and the polynomial f. So we can find the number of roots is equal to the degree of x to the p minus x and f. So we can count the number of roots of f, not counting multiplicity, very fast. And you notice that this has might a very high degree, but only has very few non-zero coefficients. So we can work out the greatest common divisor very fast by working out x to the p modulo f using the Russian peasant method. So, so this is indeed a fast algorithm, even if p is very large with hundreds of digits. Well, we don't just want to know the number of roots. We want to know what the actual roots are. And here's, here's the clever idea. The, the point is we can actually factorise x to the p minus x as a product of polynomials with only a few coefficients. We can write it as x times x to the p minus 1 minus 1. And now we can write this as x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1 times x to the p minus 1 over 2 plus 1. Here we're assuming p is odd. Um, if p is equal to 2, it's completely trivial to find the roots of f because you just try out the root x equals 0 and x equals 1. So assuming p is odd doesn't really matter. We need p being odd so we can divide p minus 1 by 2. And now you notice this will be a product of some of the roots of f, and this will be a product of some of the roots of f, but it won't be all of them. So what we can do is we can calculate f the greatest common divisor of f with x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1. And we can calculate the greatest common divisor of f with x to the p minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And this will be a product of x minus ri for some of the roots. And this will be a product of x minus ri for others of the roots. And if we are lucky... We are lucky. Some roots of f are roots of x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1, and some are roots of x to the p minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And um, in that case, when we take the greatest common divisor as degree less than the degree of f. So we've broken f into a product of two polynomials of smaller degree, and then we can just carry on. So um, by induction, we, we assume we can find all the roots of polynomials of smaller degree and so on. Well, 
Um, so that will sometimes work. But what if all the roots of f are roots of, say, x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1? In that case, taking the greatest common divisor of f in this polynomial here will just give us back f, and we haven't made any progress. So, um, um, we, we haven't managed to reduce its degree. Well, all you do now is we change f to f of x plus 1. And this changes all the roots by plus 1, and then... With any luck, if we take the greatest common divisor of f of x plus 1 with x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1, this will probably um, um, have degree less than f of x plus 1. What if it doesn't? Well, then we try f of x plus 2 with x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1. Or we, we, mean we don't have to add 0, 1, and 2. We could just add random numbers here, but... Um, Usually there's no particular reason not to just keep on adding 1 to x. So each of these has sort of at least a 50% chance of either finding a root or reducing the degree of f. So we can, this is a sort of probabilistic algorithm. We just try changing f at random until we find something that breaks it down into, into smaller factors. Um, so let's just do an example of this. Suppose we want to solve say x to the 4 minus x squared minus 2 is congruent to 0 modulo 5. Well, of, of course, we, we could do it, do it just by trial and error, but let's pretend that 5 is a, is a really big number. So we factor x to the 5 minus 1 as being x times x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1. So this is x times x to the p minus 1 over 2 minus 1 times x to the p minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And we, we, we probably ought to stop and check that 0 isn't a root, but that's pretty trivial. I mean, if, if the constant term vanishes, then, then of course we notice the polynomial has 0 as a root. Um, so um, um, what we do is we take the greatest common divisor of f with x to the... Um, um, we may as well take the greatest common divisor with x to the 5 minus 1, and th this will give us a polynomial which just has um, um, degree 1 factors. And we find the greatest common divisor of this is x squared plus 1, so we know it's got two um, roots. Now we try and find the roots of x squared plus 1 pretending we haven't already noticed there 2 and minus 2. So we take the greatest common divisor of x squared plus 1 with x to the 5 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. And we compute this greatest common divisor. Well, I mean, we ought to use the Russian peasant method if, if 2 was a very large number, but of course um, we, we, we just find this is equal to 1. And this is no good. It hasn't told us what any of the roots are. So, so now we change this to x plus 1 squared plus 1. So here we're just changing x to x plus 1 in this factor. And, and we try again. So we get x to the 5 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. And if we compute this greatest common divisor, well, this is just x squared plus 2. And if we compute the greatest common divisor of these two, um, um, the, the, the greatest common divisor is now x plus 1. So we found a root x equals minus 1 of, of this expression here. So, so um, a root of x squared plus 1 is uh, minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. So we've managed to find a root of our original polynomial, and then we can take out the root and continue, and so on. Um, so this will find um, roots of um, um, polynomials. We can also factor polynomials into irreducible factors. And I'm not going to give the details of this. I'll just, just have the main idea. So the, so the main idea for degree 1 
the degree 1 factors is that x minus a divides x to the p minus x. So, 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 so this is any degree 1 factor. Um, and then um, any degree 2 irreducible polynomial divides x to the p squared minus x. Um, I'm not going to prove this. It's a result you can um, prove if you study finite fields. So now instead of using x to the p minus x to pick out degree 1 factors, we can do the same trick with x to the p squared minus x to produce degree 2 factors. So you write this as x times x to the p squared minus 1 over 2 minus 1 times x to the p squared minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And again, we, we, we now take f, the greatest common divisor of f, with x to the p squared minus 1 over 2 minus 1. And if we're lucky, this will produce a factorization of f. And if we're not lucky, we can just try changing f to f plus 1 and so on. Uh, more generally, any degree n irreducible polynomial divides um, x to the p to the n minus x. So we can again do the same trick. By the way, we notice this only works if um, p is not equal to 2. If p is equal to 2, then this method doesn't work directly and you need to try something a little bit more complicated. Um, OK, next lecture we'll be discussing how to um, rewrite a lot of number theory in terms of abstract algebra like groups, rings and fields and so on.